Thanks for joining. Uh, I don't know if you're here because of augmented reality or because you want to build a gift for your mom. So hopefully it is to build a gift for your mom and uh, we're going to be able to do that. So who is here, who has downloaded the, followed the instruction, downloaded the SDK, done anything with it? Uh, we have one person here, he will be able to follow me in uh, live and you will be able to follow him live as well. Otherwise, I'm going to show you basically how we build a, a Vuforia application, which is an augmented reality application, and how these uh, augmented reality applications work. Um, if you have your PC and you're keen on downloading the stuff, it's available. I have it on a USB stick as well if someone needs to download uh, and install. Okay, so I think it'll be mostly people listening in. Sorry, I was geared up to present uh, for a hands-on session that is everybody typing and, and doing their own coding. But since uh, it's not the case, what we're going to do is that we're going to change that and make it uh, more of a hands-off session and possibly a bit more information about augmented reality and Vuforia. So let me first introduce, there you go. Let me first introduce uh, myself. My name is uh, Gilles Fayad. I'm happy to be back to Lebanon after many years for this. I uh, essentially, uh, I'm responsible for products and services at Qualcomm in Middle East and Africa. Uh, what this means is that we bring the Qualcomm solutions into the region and we help with the help of the ecosystem, which means you guys, the operators, the phone manufacturers, and the, the solution providers, we build the solution so that the consumers can make use of it. And uh, everything we do in the region is free, which is great because we're not salesmen. And um, from that uh, perspective, we try to team up with our partners in all of the ecosystem, be it Microsoft, who you have here, be it Google, be it uh, whoever basically makes sense to, uh, to partner with. And uh, we basically try to help you become successful because if you're successful, you're gonna bring up solutions that consumers <coughs> are gonna use. And if consumers use these solutions, then Qualcomm makes money. So this is how it works. Why? Because Qualcomm is basically at the heart of the technology that you use in the mobile phone, which is basically the CDMA, wideband CDMA technology that you use. So anytime you use your mobile phone, Qualcomm makes money, which is a great thing. You pay my salary. So um, if you want to set up yourself for Unity, you have it on the Twitter feed coming from ArabNet. You have all the instructions. I'm not going to go over them. They're on the next page, but we're going to basically skim over that. What we're going to do is for those who will want to do it, uh, you can, we'll have a quick refresh while you do the setup. Uh, have you been successful? Do you have Euphoria installed? Yeah. Beautiful. So it's not that hard. If you want to try it, you can just, um, we'll tell you what to do. You basically just go to the Unity 3D portal. You follow that link, unity3d.com. You download the SDK. You install the SDK. From within the SDK, you can download the Vuforia. Um, you can download the Vuforia plugin that will allow you to build your augmented reality application. And don't forget to register for the 30 days trial period with Unity 3D, otherwise you will not have the ability to get the Android and uh, iOS plugins that you need depending on what your device is. These are the two that are supported today. Uh, also, don't forget to register to Qualcomm Developer Network. This is the way by which we get aware of you guys and we get aware so that we can get in touch with you, not to sell you or spam you, but to be aware of what you do in case there are opportunities, we help connect the dots. That's it, so it's, it's for your sake. And also, you will have to register to the Vuforia, uh, developer.vuforia.com website. This is so that you can access the target management system. You'll see what the target is in a second. This is what the physical object that you use in augmented reality, because augmented reality bridges your physical world with your virtual world. 
once you've done this, essentially, you will have the 3D, Unity 3D installed. You just go to the asset store. From the asset store, you download the Vuforia plugin. It's easy. Ask him. He's done it. It's, uh, e it's feasible. Have you done it now or before? Before. Okay. But it's easy. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is uh, basically the ability to complement what you see, the real life view, with augmented information. So essentially what you have here is the real view that you see through the camera, and you augment it with virtual content. Um, this looks simple. In the back end, it's extremely computer intensive or com computationally intensive. Let's say computer. This is on a mobile phone, which makes it even more of a challenge because um, the performance issues impact the battery life. So you need really to have a very strong solution there. Um, just for your information, you need to be able, to, in order to have a visual experience that is compelling, that basically makes people believe that what they see is attached to their reality, you need to be able to scan, recognize, track, compare and track 30 times per second per object that you are recognizing. Okay? It's very intensive uh, from a computer uh, vision perspective. Now, we're going to see a couple of, uh, of uh, applications where uh, augmented reality is being used. This is just to give you an idea about where it goes and how it's being used. So this is a Lego catalog. It's an actual Lego catalog. You can find it, and you can find the app. And it will basically help kids visualize what it is that they would be building. Or it would provide them with additional information about the object that they are trying to purchase or to they are interested in. Same way, in education, remember the skeleton you had in the science class? Now you have that skeleton on your platform on your tablet with all the layers. I can show it to you. And we have all these demos running tomorrow, by the way, at the booth. So if you're here, you can go to the booth. Games and education. Um, you can pick your own targets if you don't have the user, the, your, uh, if you don't have available targets. This is called user-defined targets. I don't know who, if you know the capture of the rope game. Love that one. Now you have a augmented reality version of it. But the most important thing is really the ability to interact with media uh, in ways that were not feasible before. And the interactivity to, uh, with media uh, brings disruptive points we're going to discuss later on. This is a app that was based for the Dubai Mall application. and appliances because you can visualize them in a real life environment without having to buy them. You can simulate that. It also helps bound kids with solutions that they might not like, like a band-aid for example. That's another example of how you can basically put an appliance in a, in a place and see it. All of these apps are available on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You can take a real object and you can interact with it. social media as well. It has a wow factor uh, that is very attractive to, to media and brands. So speaking of brands, since this is also 
one of the key topics for ArabNet, a lot of brands do use augmented reality. So these are a sample of the brands that have used uh, basically the Beforia toolkit for augmented reality solution. They go into different uh, categories and uh, at different engagement levels. From the point of advertisement, which is the point of interest, which is, for example, the catalog where you see an object, to the point of sale, that could be the shelf where the object is in a supermarket, to the point of use, which is when you actually use the object. And from a marketing perspective, it is very, very disruptive. The reason it is disruptive is because it allows you to turn the point of interest into a point of sale. It allows you to essentially engage the customers at the advertisement level, at the level of the catalog. So it's no more spray and pray that the customer is going to get the message. It is you get the message and you know if they are interested in it, you know what they are interested in, you get that feedback from the application if you want, if you build the application right, and it allows beyond that to engage them in the sale. You can sell the product before the customer has set foot in your store. And this is very appealing, very, very appealing to brands. So the kind of brands that are using it are in all the categories that uh, you find today. And the type of brands who are using them in the different categories are just uh, listed there. So this is what uh, basically these brands have been doing with the Viforia toolkit. This is the very same toolkit we're going to show you today how to build an application with. The toolkit is free. It's available on the Viforia developer website. Again, developer.viforia.com, right? <coughs> and it's one of the many software development kits that Qualcomm offers for free so that you develop successful applications so that we be successful as well. It's a win-win situation. So if you look at the uptake of Euphoria, it has been tremendous. We basically have uh, north of 45,000 developers now out of more than 130 countries. Uh, MIA is a bit more lukewarm, quite frankly. Europe is 25% uh, of the developers. The US themselves are about 20% of the developers. But we do have a few developers in Middle East and Africa. Uh, mostly in Egypt, in Pakistan, in South Africa, which are markets, but also in Lebanon. So if you're interested, we offer not only the SDKs, but we also offer trainings on these SDKs. And uh, the Euphoria one, as well as other ones. And you will be able to get these trainings. Um, just sign up, let us know who you are, and we'll make sure that you're aware of the trainings either through us or through our partners for this SDK or for other ones. In terms of the platform, uh, in terms of the rewards, so this is not just us saying it's a good, uh, it's a good augmented reality SDK, it's actually the industry itself that recognizes it from Can to Apple to uh, basically um, other big uh, names in the industry who recognize the quality of the kit. Now we're going to go a bit more deep into what is augmented reality, how you work with it. So the first thing is about detecting targets. You see, when I point to something, I recognize it. The type of targets I can recognize are either flat surfaces like images or frame markers. The frame markers are kind of empty, hollowed QR codes. You can draw anything in. The important thing is that you keep that on the side. And 3D objects, simple 3D objects can be recognized the same way, okay? So these are the targets. What do you do with these targets? You choose them, and they should represent a physical object, obviously. And uh, essentially, then you have to upload the target in itself, which is the image that is sitting on the object, on the target management system. And uh, then you can upload many of them, and you can put them in a batch and get them on your phone for offline processing, or as we're going to see with the cloud version that is coming up, that has, is now available, uh, basically you will be able to download as many as you need because all the recognition is being done in the cloud. Once you choose your targets, you have to develop 
your assets. The assets are the things that you add, be it a video, an audio file, a URL, uh, a 3D object. Uh, what we're going to do is put a 3D object on a target. You have to develop that content, or you can buy it, or you can acquire it, um, and you can do it basically um, in different tools, such as Maya or Blender or different 3D CAD tools, if it's a 3D thing. And then you have to integrate it in your app. You have two ways of integrating it into your app. In the native SDK, that is the software developer kit that integrates to the Android or iOS development environment, so either to Xcode or to Eclipse. And then you build your application the way you would do it normally, or you do it through Unity. So how many of you use Unity? Okay, so these are the guys who basically downloaded it. Unity is a very popular um, development environment. It's also cross-platform, not only for Android and iOS, but it runs also on, on Windows, which is a great thing. This way you can basically be able to reach more and more of the devices that are coming out. And uh, basically you are able with uh, that platform to build an application. The drawback of Unity, quote unquote, is that everything is built in Unity, right? Um, you can obviously integrate Unity with uh, native applications, but it is a bit more tedious. So if you have an app that you want to add augmented reality to, better go the SDK route. If you're starting from scratch, you can start with Unity and get done within an hour, like we're going to see today. The next version of the SDK, version 2.0, uh, basically enables you to have the targets on the cloud. It allows you also to bring simple 2D and text images, etc., on top of uh, the targets and um, allows you to, again, integrate the app with the same tools as before. What it brings is the ability to really have access to millions and millions and millions of images offline and uh, be able to recognize these and uh, treat them. This is very useful in, again, catalog-based application where you want to have the ability to recognize different images and also update the images without having to go through the hassle of updating the app so that it can download the targets. Something you can do in 1.5, but in a bit more tedious way, I would say, something that needs to be a bit more controlled. It has pros and cons. 2.0 is very good if you're online. 1.5 is very good if you're offline. 2.0 will do recognition in the cloud that will take about one second to recognize an object. 1.0 will do it on the device itself, will, ha will happen very fast, within 100 milliseconds. <coughs> Drawback is, for 1.5, you need to refresh the target. So the app is limited in its functionality in the sense that it better be the same logic. So imagine that you have a newspaper where you have a picture on the front page that gives you the latest news, that picture by the time it's printed, the news is outdated. If the newspaper would like to provide the most up-to-date news, they could have a YouTube clip that would replace that image. When you point the phone to it, the image gets recognized. A YouTube clip with the latest information about the event that is being portrayed on that front page plays out, right? So the application in itself doesn't change. Every day you're gonna you reuse the, every, the same application. The logic is gonna be the same. The only thing that needs to change is the image being recognized and the content that is being played. And these can be updated and refreshed on a daily basis. For that, you don't need 2.0. You can do it with 1.5 alone, okay? So to give you an idea where 2.0 is interesting as well is when you are, for example, in a shop environment. So American Apparel is using augmented reality in order to bring an experience and the engagement with consumers that is not feasible otherwise in a retail environment. So you can pick the objects, you can change the colors, you can choose the colors immediately without having to go through the hassle of going to the, um, to the SAR, well, the room where you try them. You can also uh, share the information, see the reviews, most people who have a smartphone check, do a check on what they are buying at the time at which they are buying it, that is in store. 
They also share the information with their friends, like, do you think I should buy this? Do you, oh, I love this thing, etc. So this is uh, essentially how you engage. The other thing that uh, you can do as well is the ability with 2.0 to do video on textures. Video on textures is the ability to, as you're going to see, the ability to run a video on the target itself. So what we are going to see here are DVD covers. And you see the trailer of the DVD. I got that shrek. I envy you. That shows up immediately. Uh, oh. And not only is it running, it continues running, but the other one starts running as well. So you could have all the covers of your DVDs and pick the one you want based on the trailers that you see. And you see all the trailers in real time in parallel directly on the screen. It's not a YouTube video flat on the screen. It's directly on the object itself. Okay. So this is an example of video on texture. The infrastructure for that is a mobile application that has different components and a backend, the backend in the cloud. What you have are images that you upload, and we're going to upload some of these if you want to develop your own. We're going to upload these images, and you can do it in two ways. You can do it through APIs if you want to upload them from an application, the application itself. Let's say you have your own user-defined target in the application so that you can play your game on top of the target of your choice. This would be done through the, uh, sorry, through the service API. Or you might want to have a catalog of images that you're building for a given brand so that you can augment uh, the experience uh, of the brand app. This is done through the web UI. Both of these are input to a target management system. The web UI, by the way, is being used as well for the 1.5. It's exactly the same, the same mechanism. You upload an image, and this image basically gets recognized, gets processed, gets analyzed for how ready it is. And from there on, you're able to reuse it in a device target database that goes to the phone. In the case of 1.5, that is a static database. You download it, it runs on your application. You can refresh it, but once it's downloaded, it's downloaded. In the case of 2.0, the engine will recognize something and send it to the cloud target database for recognition. This is where objects are recognized in real time in the cloud. And here is where your application will be. What your application does, which is your added value spent here, the augmented reality is conveniently provided to you through the Vuforia engine SDK. Okay. Now, how does that SDK look internally? Sorry, for those who are not technical, we're going to go into a bit more technical aspect. You basically have a camera. That camera gets processed, the frames get processed, the pixels get converted, and from there, we keep the converted frames so that they can be used also for rendering, so that you can render the image, or you can process it. The SDK really looks here in terms of recognizing targets detecting objects, track the objects, evaluate the virtual buttons. Virtual buttons are buttons that sit on the physical object itself that allows you to basically point to it and get a response from that virtual button the same way as you would have on a button on your interface. It's where they call them virtual buttons because the buttons on your interface are the virtual ones, whereas the one on the physical object would be the real one. But we live so much in the virtual world now that everything is kind of flip-flop. So what does it do? It detects new objects, it tracks the detected object, and it evaluates the virtual buttons. All of that updates the state object structure. That state object structure says, I have this target, I see this target, I recognize it, and by the way, this is the 3D object that will run on top of it. And this is what gets queried by your application. Your application then is aware that this target is available I need to show this object on top of it. And this object being shown on top of it means that and that to my application. Okay, could be like in the newspaper example, oh, the guy is watching the latest news, right? So maybe I want to tell him something about it. You update your app logic and you render your graphics. You render your graphics in the case of 3D with 3D assets, in the case of video with 
whatever video tools are available to you through your operating system. So this is how the SDK works for the technical, technically inclined. So before, any question before we go to the, to the demo? Yes. So that's a very good question. File sizes. Uh, a typical Euphoria application built in SDK will be a few megabytes, about a handful of them, five megabytes, if it's a normal image recognition application. The more you put targets on it, the more it will require space. The more you put assets on it, the more it will require space. This is why, at one point, you offload things over the cloud as well, so that you can do things on the cloud. If you go back to this model, you see that not only do you have the cloud target database for the targets that you offload to the cloud, but you have your content database where your content will sit, the assets, your videos, your 3D objects that you want to render that basically are also sitting on the cloud. So that keeps your application lean from that standpoint. You can, so the, uh, these, uh, you notice these are two separate databases. This one is yours, and this one comes from Qualcomm, okay? Now, this being said, you have about 150 kilobytes of metadata available per image that you could attach to the target itself. So consider it as a handle, you fetch it, and you have the metadata, you can do whatever you want with it, okay? Yes? So you upload the images. We're gonna we're gonna do it ourselves. Yes. No, no, it doesn't. It essentially um, you have what are called local invariants in an image, and things that are like corners and angles that get detected and that build kind of the footprint, the fingerprint, sorry, of the image. This information is vectorized, it's put into a structure like it looks like a vector, and that vector is being sent and matched on the target database. Consumption of what? It's nothing, the vector is uh, 150 bytes or so, nothing, nothing uh, fancy. You don't send the whole image, no. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to recognize that fast. You need to be able to send it gets it recognized among millions of images with the correct match being sent back to you, okay? Any more question? Wow, we're running a bit short. Uh, can we keep the, then the technical question um, aside and just run, uh, go a bit uh, through? I, I can talk to you later offline if you want for these, okay. But the best way is just register with the website and you will get all the answers, and we will provide you as well with uh, information. So we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do is go to Unity. Uh, because we're running sh a bit short on time, this, I promised you an application for your mom, this is it. So what I did was to take two pictures out of the web, right? Yesterday evening, I went to Google, I typed uh, Mother Day, and because I'm in Beirut, it gave me two uh, Lebanese-related images that I found cute. One is a Valentine heart, okay, it's not Mother's, Mother's Day, but still. And the other one is ex exactly about Mother's Day. So what I did was to take these two targets and add them to the system. I'm gonna show you how. And then add the assets to these targets and then compile the application. And now when I look at the image with a phone, this is my image and my heart goes on top of it, or this is my image and my flowers go on top of it. And if I have both available, then I will be able to recognize both and render both the flowers and the hearts, okay? So we're gonna go very quickly through that. I'm gonna try to do it uh, now. I have so many things that are popping up. Anyway. So uh, let me close this one and do a new project.
this is what we do. We do new projects, and we are going to call it uh, ArabNet4. Uh, that might exist. So let's call it ArabNet4. And then what we are going to pick are the Vuforia packages that are available there. Uh, if you would need to develop for iOS, you pick the iOS one. For Android, the Android one. I'm going to develop for Android. And I click Create Project. And I'm going to get into a completely new project. Let me close this thing. And let me go back to the PC. So the flowers I just downloaded. As you could see from here, these are the flowers where, where are they? No, they are here. These are the flowers that I downloaded, right? And uh, I also downloaded um, the heart the same way from a website. In that case, I think it was Turbo Squid. So these are the flowers, right? So you can download free assets if you want, but obviously will be limited in your choice. Be careful in what you pick. Don't try to make an application for Louis Vuitton without Louis Vuitton's authorization, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to stay on the, on the App Store very long. Um, then, essentially, you have, we're here, ready to build an application. What you have here is your scene. This is what you would see through your camera. And here, you have the hierarchy of objects that you have, the project structure, and the inspector for given objects. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the main camera. We don't need it. And we're going to replace that one with a Qualcomm uh, augmented uh, camera. So essentially, let me see, where is it? Uh, it should be in terms of uh, preload, prefab, sorry, AR camera. This is my augmented reality camera. So the first thing I'm going to do with my augmented reality camera, as you can see, it is pointing in the direction of the blue arrow. I'm going to turn it around so that it faces down. So I'm going to turn it, essentially, so that it goes all the way to 90 degrees. It faces down. Now I have something that faces down. I need now to put a target, an image target. I take my image target, and I put it here. Now, where is my image target? Quite frankly, no, sorry. This is a multi-target. Right. I take my image target, and I put it here. Where is my image target? Here it is. Where is my AR camera? Here it is. Mm, they don't go well together, right? So what do I need to do? I look at, I need to adjust them, find them. So I need first to take my AR camera and I need to bring it up. So I bring it up and as I bring it up, I see my target showing up in my view, what, would see, what I would see through my screen, right? So now I have it good enough here, right? And uh, I have my image target. Um, it's as good as it could be. And now the problem is my target is not very lit. So what I'm going to do is create a directional light so that I can see what I'm <coughs> looking at. Now, my image target is empty. That's target. I need it to be able to recognize something. So how am I going to do that? that I have, right? Or I could tell it to download that image that I downloaded, right? These flower things and these things. So how do I do that? I have them. I have uploaded them on the target management system. Uh, where's my target? With my two targets. Uh, if I look at the Mother Day one, then you're going to see that it has four stars. Four stars are important because uh, they I'm not linked or what? Oh, I'm not connected to my account. Okay. So. I'm logging into my account. Okay. Anyway, you saw my targets. <laughs> Good thing I had them up. These are, for ArabNet, my two targets. Mother's Day has four stars, means it's very good. It's good enough for tracking, OK? You need 
three stars and above, you have a very good experience. Valentine has less stars. It's three. What are the stars based on? It's based on the ability really to have not only a unique fingerprint to the image, but uh, contrast and a level of detail that is distributed enough so that when you put your object on it, when you move the, the object, when you move the physical object, it can be tracked very easily because it has all of the information well distributed on the target itself. As well, if you hide a piece of the target, you need to be still able to see your asset. So it needs to be able to work with partial information with of the image, not the full image. So this is, the more you have stars, the better it is. These are my two targets. Now if I want to download them, I can select them. One, two and I download the selected target. If I download the selected target, I will, they will show them, they will show into my, let's see if it works. Yes, it should. And I'm gonna call it ArabNet 2013 uh, or ArabNet. Let's call it ArabNet, okay? And if I say create, let's see if it works. It is sending the request, and it is downloading my Unity package here, my ArabNet Unity package, right? So these are my two images. I uploaded, the first thing I did was just to upload them on the target management system. They gave me a rating. Rating means the images are good enough. If not, you have all the details in the resources here as to how to improve them. And I basically got my target um, uh, put into a package. My package is available. I just double click on my package. It's ready to install. I import these. Once I import them, they will show up in my uh, list here. And where do they show? Let me check where they show. Uh, if I pick now here, I have ArabNet and I can pick either Valentine or Mother's Day, okay? So I'm gonna pick Mother's Day, the first one, and then this is my target, and I have my directional light, and I have my augmented reality camera. The other thing, the last thing I need is what? What do I miss? The thing I'm gonna display, the asset. So I'm gonna import a new asset. And uh, the asset I'm gonna import R is in, let's see, maybe it's that one. Do I have heart? It's called heart dot obj. Here it is, wherever it is, I don't care. I'm importing that asset. This is my heart. Well, uh, virtually speaking. I add my heart here. Now my heart shows up in my environment. I need to bring it on top of my target. Oh, it shows up now in my viewfinder. I bring it down. Let's see where it is exactly. It's pretty much on the target. By the way, I don't like it. Why? I don't like its color. So let me change my heart's color. I'm going to make it, how about I make it red? Okay. So now we have a red heart on top of a target, right? We're pretty much done, almost. The other thing we need now is on the AR camera, we need to, to link the, the heart, sorry, we need to link it to the image target. That's the way to tell Unity very simply, I want this asset to show on that target, okay? I want this object to show on that image. And then I'm done. I just have to make sure my settings are done, which is basically that the active data set recognized by the camera is ArabNet that it loads it. And at the image target level, I just need to make sure ArabNet Mother's Day, all is done. So Unity, I'm gonna build my scene. I add my current scene and let's save it and let's call it ArabNet Demo. And now here is my ArabNet Demo and I could develop for PC and Mac but since this is for augmented reality on the handphone, on the handset, I can develop for Android. 
I look at the player settings, and in the player settings, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to start using it with Froyo. I don't need anything below Froyo at this point in time. And uh, I always miss something in this thing. So if it works, it's a miracle. But anyway, let's say build, and it should be, uh, let's call it that are Arab net. Oh, before we build it, before we build it, let's do one thing before we do that. Let's give it an icon. And the icon we're going to pick up is the very same. And why don't we give it also a splash image, which is also the same. This way, it will show up when we run the application. And now we say build. Let me just check the settings again. No. Okay, for Android, for Android, for Android. Playing with settings. Oh, here it is. Uh, other settings. So, Android. Oh, yes. I knew I missed something. So, here I'm going to call it QC Mia for Qualcomm Mia, and the product I'm going to call Arabnet. And that's it. You see, it's not that hard. Now I say build. And Arab net demo. Save. And we go. While we do this, I'm going to run, I'm going to bring up an Android phone. If you have an Android phone, you can run it. We should be done in five minutes. So we need to launch this phone. And just connect it. So the phone is launching. Maybe for the demo, to, to prove you that the demo works, you will have to see it on my phone. Um, I can't really do differently. Maybe what I can do is I'm going to try first to secure the thing to show you the app. I'm going to run the Mother's Day app here, right? You see it? It's the same image. Now look well at my hand. <laughs> now I'm going to put this, which shows you the viewfinder. That is what you see, right? I'm going to put it on top of the image. And I see the flowers. Why? Because it's my other example. So let me pick up <laughs> the heart one. Um, the heart one here, the Valentine JPEG. Same thing. Now if I put it up, I see my heart in 3D. You see the heart? Now if this is an object that is flat, you will see the heart. You will see the heart, sorry. Uh, yeah, because on top of it, so you, you see the heart in 3D. Now if you have the thing printed out, the heart will look up like this, like a bottle. Right, standing up, but because it's flat, it's showing differently. Now, I put in my other project, I put the two images together. So, I'm going to show you the two next to each other. I'm going to open the. I'm going to open the mom thing, and I'm going to open the Valentine thing, and I'm going to put them next to each other. And hopefully, I should be able to get to see. Let me make them a bit smaller so that we have space. I should be able to see them next to each other and see a heart on one and flowers on the other one. You see it? Yeah? The flowers are here, and the heart is here. Okay, and the nice thing is that it's a very intuitive interface because the object locks on it. You have basically the position of the object, the position of the phone that are locked. So when you zoom in, you're going to zoom in on your heart. If you turn around, you're going to turn around it, etc. So this is the application in itself. 
If we have two minutes, I can show you how to compile it or how to put it on the phone, but that's about it. Just did it, okay? So that's it. If you want to do an application like this, I'll be sitting for half an hour here. I'll help you build an application for your mom. Thank you.